Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today it's another uh, weekly reading vlog. So it is October 13th. It is, um, I don't know, around 1, 1.22 in the afternoon. Just got home from a church and then eaten after church and all that stuff. And I thought, I better get on here and start this reading vlog. So that's what I'm going to do. I had a pretty great week last week. I read a ton of things, including a bunch of picture books and things like that. You'll see that whenever my reading vlog comes out. So you'll already have seen that. But yeah, there was a lot of books. A lot of them were like really small and stuff like that. But yeah, it was. It, I've been having fun. It, it, that was a lot though last week. It was quite a bit so I don't think there'll be as many this week as it was last week but I am going to uh, get started on well I've started um, the creepening of dogwood house by oh it's either Ellen Royce or Eden Royce and now I don't remember but you'll see the picture here um, I've read uh, Root Magic by this author, which I thought was just okay, and so I am hoping to enjoy this one, but I'm 47% into it, and so far not really a lot has happened, and I was thinking this one was going to be like a tiny bit spookier than like the books that I have been reading, so we'll see. Um, I know it has to do with hoodoo and um, hair burning and things like that, some... Uh, parts of the culture where the hoodoo um, it says that uh, like it's not a religion for everybody but then some people who practice it they do use parts of it in like everyday life and things like that which I think I guess is where the hair burning part comes from and all that stuff but yeah um, we're just starting to get like uh, the main characters hearing some voices in the house and he's just finding a few things in this house and so hopefully, hopefully it will pick up a little bit more but it's been okay I mean it's not horrible I just would like a little bit more things to happen um also still in the middle of caught dead by SJ Wills and it's not the book it's me I just haven't been really concentrating on my eyeball reading books and if I have, they've been like the really short chapter book ones and not the actual, you know, like novel length, like big novel length books, I guess you could say. But yeah, I am curious to see what is going on with that one and I need to buckle down and read that one a little bit more. Which is why there might not be quite as many books being read this week as opposed to last week because I really crammed in a lot last week. So I'm probably going to slow down this week. <laughs> And, um, what else am I reading? I think that might be the only two books that I have currently on the go. I do know that I will be getting to, uh, the super secret, or wait, the, yeah, the super secret Octagon Valley Society by Melissa De La Cruz. I have to remember how to read that. It's the, and then you have to read that stuff and then go on. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm curious to see what this one is going to be about and everything. I don't think it's going to be spooky or anything like that. It just has to do with kids that have superpowers, but we'll give it a try. And I'm not sure. I don't know exactly. I have a lot of things that I really need to get to, and a lot of them involve eyeball reading. So we just need to kick it into gear with that. Now, I did finish a book yesterday after that um, I don't think I I talked about on the uh, end when I wrapped up because I wrapped up pretty early yesterday so I need to talk about um, Attack of the 40 Foot Chicken by uh, Patrick Carmen. this is the second book in the Bonkers series I read the first one the beginning of the month that was um, The Terror in Jenny's Armpit. I will say these are going to be books that you need to read in order because even the book tells you if you haven't read about Jenny's problem 
then you're going to be spoiled. <laughs> so they are books that you need to read in order. And this one is uh, about the one of the other characters, Jen, one of Jenny's friends. And for some reason, I cannot think of his name. Oh, I can't think of what it is. But anyway, um, it, he's telling the adventure of how he become a person riding a 40-foot chicken. And uh, it all goes back to there is this farm in Nevermind, which is not the name of the town, but what they call it. And they pick strawberries there. A lot of young people do, and they get these McTokens. And you can turn in the tokens for, like, some prizes and things like that and everything. But this kid, he makes sure that he gets cash for his. And he's a very fast strawberry picker and all that. Well, the one that's kind of overseeing them is a teenager. And he talks uh, the main character into... Uh, taking a higher up position because he's like, man, you, you pick all these strawberries. You really need to have like this better job or whatever. He negotiates a deal with them. Well, then the uh, this other girl, she's taking him around and kind of showing him things. And you find out on this farm, there are some really strange things that are going on in this farm. And one of them is that um, the father is trying to, is experimenting, trying to uh, fix some things that happened. And it all has to do with the uh, chemical plant that was there before, which you find out about that plant if you've read um, the Terror in Jenny's Armpit and everything. And you, you get to see some unique uh, critters. There's a horse that's really small with a big head. There's a little person because something happened and everything. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out how to make her big again. And then you've got the 40-foot chicken. And this 40-foot chicken gets scared easily. And uh, while they were in there, something went drastically wrong. And then um, the main character thought he could catch it by lassoing it. But he lassoed its foot. And so adventure ensues from there. And this one kind of left me hanging at the end. I wasn't expecting that. I was a little upset about that. Because, uh, like, some, well, something happens, and then the book kind of just stops. And so, I know that this the is going to continue on with the next book, which I can't remember what it is, but it's something about Snurbville, which I know Snurbs were, like, featured in the first book. Which is why, like, you really need to read these in order if you are going to read them, or if your kid is going to read them. I think they're really fun. I think kids would appreciate them. And I think they would, you know, have a lot more fun with them probably than most adults would. You know, I'm just a big kid at heart. So I think most middle grade books are fun and everything. So even the silly ones. And so, yeah, I give it 3.5 stars, but I would probably up it to four stars on Goodreads. And then a non... Uh, it wasn't a kid's book, but it's still uh, one of the uh, challenges that I was doing, so I'll go ahead and mention it. And I finished The Kolchak Papers by Jeff Rice, or Kolchak, Kolchak, I don't, I don't know how to say that exactly. But uh, this one I found out is the books came first, and then the TV, then there was a movie, and then there was the TV series. So if you've ever heard of The Night Stalker, and the and uh, Kolchak and everything, and he investigates a lot of paranormal things that are going on. And I read a bind up, and so it had the Night Stalker and the Night Strangler in it. And the Night Stalker is about vampire, and, uh, and nobody believes him whenever he says he's pretty sure that it's vampire and everything. And uh, yeah, kind of his reputation and things are on the line here. Nobody wants to listen to him. He's a reporter, and he's trying to save lives. And in the second one, we have some uh, murders that are happening, and people are being strangled. But there's, like, this little pinprick, like, in the back of their neck or whatever. And he finds out that there could be somebody... It happened every so many years. I can't remember exactly. I don't know if it was 20 years or what. 
but these murders happened like six of them or something like that like a whole there's several of them in a row that happened and it, it may be because somebody is still alive from way back then in a certain way and everything so yeah they were both kind of interesting i I like the first one about the vampire more than the one about um, the man who might be 100 years old but still looks like he's 30 or something like that. <laughs> I mean, that one was okay, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the first one a lot more. I think there are more books, but they're not written by the original author. And so I may check those out eventually. I think the original author just had the two books from what I can see, and they are, that's why they are like the original and everything, and they are the ones that are the show is ba was based on, and everything. And so, yeah, overall, I think I would give the bind up 3.5 stars because I mean, I did really enjoy the first one, but the second one was just okay. And so, I'd probably give it four stars on Goodreads, but my own personal rating is 3.5. And so, yeah, um, I will pop on here whenever I uh, finish something else or have anything of interest to talk about. So, hey, it's um, Monday uh, around, let's see, what time is it? Almost 11 o'clock. And so I've decided to come on here and update about finishing The Creepening of Dogwood House by Eden Royce. Um, finally, a middle grade book that's a standalone. It, it wrapped up everything at the end. I finally got a standalone. <laughs> But uh, this book is really about, I think, the grieving process and how it's okay to be happy in the situation that you find yourself in, even though you're sad. Um, to It's okay to laugh sometimes. It, it's okay to move on. That you're not going to forget about your loved ones that have passed on. And that it's, it's okay to still live and to do things and all that stuff. This is about um, a young man whose name I cannot remember. But anyway, oh, Roddy. His name is Roddy. And uh, his mother had passed away. And he was in an orphanage type place for a while, for like two months, while they were trying to find his aunt. He didn't know his aunt very well. He'd only see her um, on like a phone call, like chat now and then. And everything so it was really strange for whenever she does show up and she's got a husband now and everything and um, you know going with them and not knowing them very well but at the same time feeling really comforted by being with them and all that stuff and they are moving into uh, I think her name is Angie his aunt's uh, childhood home he finds out a lot of secrets about his mother that he didn't know. That um, she ran away, like kind of left that house when she was 17 and never came back. Kind of lost contact with everybody, like especially her sister. They didn't really contact each other very much after that. That His aunt is her younger sister. So she was still like in probably like middle school whenever her sister left. And like just never came back or contacted anyone. She didn't really know why that happened or anything like that. And the more he's in this house, the creepier some things are starting to be, starting to hear some voices. Um, he's helping them clean it up because it is really in disarray. And so they are uh, cleaning it up and repainting and all that kind of stuff that they're putting in some muscle work. And he's been working on his room, doesn't want to you know, he wants to help out, doesn't want to be a burden, and things like that. But they're really sweet to him, and, like, buy him new clothes and get him some things. And, um, they don't have kids, so they've never had kids, so this is a new experience for them as well. And everything, but some weird things are happening, and his sit, um, his aunt is starting to act kind of, like, weird, like, ran down and everything. And he understands he's not getting a whole lot of sleep, and... You find out there is this, like, a ritual of hair burning that has to do with, like, the hoodoo uh, culture. And evidently the, um, the hair burning is a way to keep certain things away from you, evil spirits and stuff. You don't want to leave any hair uh, on your brush or anything like that, so you would burn it and get rid of it. 
and everything. And uh, he thought that was kind of strange, even though his aunt was doing it. And he's like, you know, I don't want nobody burning my hair or anything. But then he starts having these headaches and some weird dreams. And, you know, he finds out maybe he shouldn't have let uh, something get a hold of his hair. Because there is this bridge man. And he's like this evil spirit. And he's like, uh, gathers people's hair. And um, kind of torments people and all that stuff. And he's tormenting the, his aunt. And so he's going to have to try to figure out how to confront this and all that stuff and along the way he's confronting a lot of his um kind of problems with like the grieving and all that kind of stuff at the same time i thought it was an okay book i didn't think it was great but it was okay um the first part of it was a little slow and then i thought it was like really quick to wrap up the one thing it was i was really glad that it wasn't part of a series it was just a book, just a standalone book and everything. And maybe because of that, I thought it wrapped up really quick. I don't know. But uh, I thought the latter half of it was quite entertaining and a little spooky at times, I think people might think, and um, everything. But overall, I thought it was okay. And I gave it 3.5 stars. Um, I'll probably give it 3 stars on Goodreads. But my own personal rating is 3.5. But yeah, I think some people will probably enjoy it more than I did and everything. So if it sounds like something that could be interesting, you should give it a try. It has a really great cover. It definitely has a nice creepy cover. I like it and everything. And, you know, I've read another Root Magic from this author. And I kind of thought it was just okay, too. So, you know, so far, uh, I mean, they haven't been bad. They've just been okay. So, I will pop back on here when I finish something else. Later. Hello, everybody. It is uh, Wednesday, about four something in the afternoon. It's been kind of a day. Not a great day. I had to, I had to go get an x ray today on my hip because my hip's been bothering me. And I just got the news back on the x-ray, and they're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with your hip. There's no fractures, there's no this, that. So it's probably just early osteoarthritis. And so I'm like, well, there's something we can do because it really hurts. I have a hard time, like, sleeping and everything because it's, it's, it's very painful. It just really hurts. So, I'm going to be taking some anti-inflammatory and see if that helps, I guess. That's the first step. But yeah, I'm a little bummed. But anyway, <laughs> life goes on, right? Uh, I'm here to talk about a couple of books that I finished. And so one of those is um, the Super Secret... Uh, the, the Super Secret Octagon Valley Society. It's a mouthful. By Melissa De La Cruz. Um, I wasn't sure how this would fit in, if it, if it would fit in well with Halloween, but actually I think it fit in pretty good because some of the things that happened in here were a little spooky. I would think that people would think that it was a little high-octane spooky kind of things were going on and everything. So, um... I would say this is almost like if you was to take Willy Wonka from the cho Chocolate Factory and instead of giving him a Chocolate Factory, you gave him the Octagon Valley Society and instead of golden tickets, he gave everybody an evaluation. <laughs> and that's what you have here. And so, yeah, it is about these kids who... Um, they took an evaluation to see if they had the right skills and everything to get into this Octagon Valley Society and everything. And you learned that it's just an ordinary, ordinary evaluation test. But there was one question on there that is how people got picked for uh, or accepted for being into the society. And that was if they could see number 108. 
and number 108 didn't show up for everybody and the question was can you see this question <laughs> and that's how we got uh, most of the kids in here except for Harold <laughs> and uh, so they go to this society and they meet um, Alessander Octagon and he is uh, there to put them through this test to see how they do and all that stuff. And so this is the actual evaluation. So this other thing wasn't it. So the kids are like, okay. Well, they get put in a room and they're like blindfolded and they have no clue what's going on. And then um, they have to work together. They have to go through these different rooms and in these different levels there are very dangerous things like they realize in the room that they are in that it's starting to shrink and get smaller and smaller like the walls are caving in on them if they don't figure out the puzzle because they have to get these puzzle pieces and things and if they don't figure out the puzzle right you know it looks like they might get squashed and they you know they work through that the way they work through that is one of the kids like he done something and he didn't re didn't realize he could do and you know that's basically what this is about it's got these kids that are supposed to have maybe some uh, super secret powers they didn't know about and this is unlocking them and things and they're the ones that's why they could see the number uh the 108th question and they have to go through all these things and you know they're trying to survive <laughs> to the end <laughs> and then they find out you know what's going on after they make it through. I mean, there was, like, a room with fire. There was, um... There was, like, a siren who was leading them to the water. And, uh, yeah, there was all different kinds of things. That's why I said I think it fed in really well with Halloween as being a slightly spooky because some of the things that went on, people would consider a little bit spooky and, you know, a little bit high stakes and things like that. But yeah, I I don't really feel like I can say a whole lot else about it without spoiling like what it is actually about. But it was different than I thought it was going to be. It is the first in the series. Um, I think I kind of knew that going in. There's the second one, I think, coming out next year and everything. And so it's kind of sci-fi-ish, kind of fantasy, kind of mystery, because they're trying to figure out some things that are going on and everything and so yeah i enjoyed it i give it four stars i thought it was kind of cool it was different but yeah it reminded me a lot of charlie and the chocolate factory except for in the octagon valley society <laughs> and no chocolate and then the next one i read was i am now officially caught up on as far as i can tell and I read it all in one month. Go me. I don't normally binge things. But these were super cute. And when I finished the second one, I knew immediately I was going to have to read this third one. Because it kind of left me hanging a little bit. And so I can't talk a whole lot about the third one. But it was um, Escape from the Dungeons of Schnurville by Patrick Carmen. And it's the third book in the Bonkers series. You definitely need to read these in order and everything because they will. They mention uh, Jenny and her terror in her armpit <laughs> even in the third one. But they really, you know, in the second one, it would spoil things for that one if you didn't read that one before you read the other ones. And if you read the third one before reading the second one, you would be totally confused. So yeah, you definitely do need to read these in order. And the third one, I can't really say a whole lot except for... It's still the the main character. I couldn't remember his name for the second one whenever I was talking about it. But his name is Barker Mifflin. <laughs> and Barker Mifflin, he is always prepared for everything. He's always prepared to uh, an apocalypse coming or whatever. He has a little backpack. He's always prepared. But he wasn't quite prepared for that uh, 40-foot chicken from book number two. And for the things that happened afterwards. <laughs> But in the third one, we do get a little person, like a little person, and you can see the little person on the cover because 
the head you have down here at the bottom, that would be Barker Mifflin. And then you got this little girl on top. So that kind of gives you an idea of how small this little person is. <laughs> and it also has to do with um, the people who used to run the uh, chemi chemistry plant, the chemical plant. I can't remember what the name of it was. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, they did experiments and did things, and they're still working on the side on things, and maybe they shouldn't do things because, um, I mean, we have a 40-foot chicken, we have a little person, uh, we've had the, the terror that's was <laughs> in Jenny's armpit, we had a little horse with a big head, and all kinds of interesting things going on, and never mind. <laughs> It's a place where they won't even tell you what the name of the town is. They'll just call it Nevermind. And it's funny. It's silly. It's it's humorous. Uh, it's what I call fun horror. It's nothing scary in it at all. But I still think it fits in with Halloween because, I mean, you've got some giant snurbs and snurbville. And you've, you've got, like, you know, things that they're trying to get away from and trying to escape. And so it has those things. But it's not scary at all. It's just silly. Because, I mean, little people, ponies with big heads, and <laughs> things like that. But yeah, it, I, I enjoyed it. I, I give it 3.5 stars. It's fun. It, it, overall, it's a, been a really kind of fun and interesting series. And the characters are different. <laughs> and so, that's everything that I've read so far. So, hopefully, I will get something else done and come on here and let you know what it is when that happens. So this is the start of my lane. I thought I would go for a little walk and let people that haven't seen where I live kind of see that I live way back in the woods and everything and that some people have said they would not walk down this because it's too spooky so <laughs> as you can see it's pretty long. So, yeah. But, most of our leaves don't really turn great colors. But, there are a few that we have. But most of ours end up like this. Just brown and falling off the trees. For those who may not know, uh, these are hedge apples, and they come from some trees and stuff that we have back here, and we have them rolling around all over. We squash them with our cars, but yeah, a hedge apple tree, very good for like burning and our um, stove at night, but you can only put like one piece in because, yeah, it gets really hot. There's some squash ones. <laughs> so this here is an entrance into a trail that my brother made because my brother lives through there. And... He made this trail, and I thought, you know, it's kind of cool. So, I am going to take you for a walk down this trail for a little ways. I'm not going to go too far, because it's really long. But, kind of gives you a glimpse of the woods that we have. And, you can probably hear all the crunching of the leaves. But yeah, would you walk through here? It can get a little spooky looking. Look at that. It's like I have my own 
little, what do they call those things? Oh, like they, they have like at weddings and stuff. Like you can like walk under them. I can't even think of what the word is. Maybe we'll see a critter. It looks like a critter's made a path down there. We do have deer. But I haven't seen any lately. So I don't know. You see, it's a long path. Full of tree obstacles. But it's a glimpse of our woods. So I hope you enjoyed my little insert of uh, the lane and everything. I was trying to figure something out to just like put in my reading vlog so that it wasn't just all books and everything. I know some people like that and some people don't. And it might have been too long for you guys. I don't know. I tried to speed a few places up. But yeah, I just wanted to show some people that haven't seen my lane that we live down how far down it goes and how long it is and then we have this cute little path that I said cute but my brother made and everything and it's kind of creepy and I thought it was a little bit fitting for uh, this time of the year to show you all the path and so hopefully you like that and everything and so I am here to finish out this reading vlog with this last clip and everything and just to let you know that I did finish another book but it was called it was an adult horror book called Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman wasn't super impressed with that by any means uh, it was for the horror club that I am in which at times I don't really know why I'm in because I really don't like most of the books that they pick um, I thought this one was okay at first and then I just had this weird suspicion that it was going to head down this one way, which it sort of did. Not exactly how I thought it was going to, but it sort of did. The audiobook was interesting because it was with a younger narrator, and so they were able to make it sound like a little kid was narrating the story because it is from the perspective of a young girl named Bella and this uh, other mommy who is haunting her. And the family and everything, some kind of entity and everything. And I, I don't know, I just I just had a feeling it was going one way. And then uh, the very last part of it, like probably like if you were reading it, maybe the last couple of pages, it just didn't really make sense how it ended. I just, I don't know, I, I was left a little confused on the ending part and everything. So yeah, I just, I wasn't really wasn't that impressed with it. It's my first Josh Mallerman book and I probably won't read anymore. I I just don't really seem to like adult horror much anymore. My tastes are changing. Um, I'm kind of getting out of I think the horror phase where I just don't really care for that much for it. So that's okay. Plenty of other books to read. <laughs> I still try one now and then and I do like my creature features. This definitely was not that. But um, yeah so that's the last thing that I finished and everything so I, I did pretty good this week because I did uh, I finished I, I caught up on a series which was really cool because I I read um, The Attack of the 40 Foot Chicken and Escape from the Dungeons of Snurville by Patrick Carmen so that was really good and then I read The Creeping of Dogwood House and the um Super Secret uh, Octagon Valley Society. And uh, The Cold Check Papers, which was another adult book. And then The Incidents Around the House, which is another one. And everything. So yeah, I did really good this week. Let me know, have you read any of these books that I have mentioned here? Um, do they sound interesting to anybody? Um, I would be curious to know down in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did... Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!